What's up everybody, I am Jaspreet Singh and do you want to know who the biggest first time home buyer is right now? No, it's not millennials. It's investors on Wall Street. BlackRock has been buying homes around the country at record breaking speeds and hedge funds have been joining the party because now they're buying homes and we're seeing institutional investors buy homes at record speeds. This is one of the reasons why so many people have been losing bidding wars on homes because you have Wall Street willing to pay top dollar on homes and they have been buying one out of every five homes in the country and in some neighborhoods they're buying one out of every three homes in the country and they're willing to pay in some cases tens of thousands of dollars over the asking price. Wall Street has already spent over 60 billion dollars buying up homes around the country which is very interesting because traditionally Wall Street hated the idea of investing in real estate. Your traditional investment portfolio especially if you have any sort of money manager from a bank on Wall Street or any sort of financial advisor is going to say that you should invest your money in cash, you should have some money in stocks, you should have some money in bonds, and you should have some money in CDs. They never mention anything about real estate unless you're investing in real estate trust, which is something that you buy in the stock market. Part of the reason for that is if you're investing in real estate, they're not making any money off of you. So if Wall Street is pouring billions and billions of dollars into the housing market, artificially inflating housing prices, making it harder for people to be able to afford homes, are they creating a housing market bubble? And that concern is pretty legitimate considering Wall Street has been on the forefront of a number of bubbles in the past. So what I want to do today is start by talking about what's going on and what Wall Street is doing, how this affects you, and what might be coming in the future. And before we jump into this, I want to give a quick shout out to Reventure Consulting who made a video on this topic which inspired me to make this video. If you want to watch his full video, I'll link it for you in the description. Now let's jump into what's going on with Wall Street and the housing market. Let's start by taking a look at the growth of investors in the housing market. CoreLogic put this together and you'll see that before the pandemic, investors were buying somewhere between 18 and 15% of homes that were listed for sale. But now after the pandemic, it has shot up to almost 30% of all homes. That's why in some neighborhoods right now, you're seeing investors from Wall Street buy nearly one out of every three homes in a neighborhood, which is why it's so difficult for people to be able to buy homes because you're competing against Wall Street, which has billions of dollars in their pocket and so they can overbid on homes because well they have the money to do so. Now it's nothing new that investors are buying homes. I mean you've been seeing small and medium-sized investors buy homes for decades. This always happened where you have people that want to buy homes and then they rent it out. But what's new is how aggressively Wall Street is buying homes. Figure 3 shows the different classes of investors and how aggressively they're buying homes and this bottom line right here are your large investors. That's hedge funds, those are your Wall Street banks and you can see that after the 2020 pandemic, they have been buying homes like crazy while your small and medium sized investors have been slowing down because they just can't afford to buy more homes. So Wall Street isn't just pricing out people that want to go out and buy a home to live in, they're also pricing out your smaller investors. This is something that we've never really seen before because before, anytime you'd see these big institutions and corporations invest in real estate, they don't want to deal with single family homes because that's the big headache. You have to deal with so many different roofs, you have to deal with so many different furnaces and they're all located in different places in the country. That's why you'd see them invest in commercial real estate. They would buy and create these big apartment complexes. They would buy office real estate. They'd buy different types of massive real estate because it's a lot easier to manage. I mean, if you have 100 units in one apartment complex, it's easier to manage that than 100 homes spread across different cities in the country. Redfin did their own study to see how many single family homes that investors are buying. And you can just see the number explode after the pandemic where investors are buying more homes as investments now than ever before. So the first question that you want to ask and understand is why in the world is Wall Street buying up all of these single family homes? Well, what you have to understand is Wall Street is in the business of trying to get a return on their money. And traditionally, Wall Street likes putting their money into paper assets, stocks, equities, things where they can easily sell their assets and see what type of returns that they're getting. But the issue is, well, stocks have been very overvalued and the valuations of some of these companies are extremely high. Like some companies on Wall Street are selling for 50 to 100 times multiples, which means that for every dollar that they earn, the price of the company goes up by 100 dollars. That's where these hedge funds and institutions are always looking for the next best thing. 
Where can we put our money now where nobody else is looking, where we can get a massive return on our money before everybody else goes? Wall Street has always had some sort of exposure to real estate, typically in the form of REITs. A REIT is a real estate investment trust, and these are companies that go out and invest in real estate. So a lot of these REITs are your corporate real estate investors. They own your large apartment complexes. They own your large office buildings. They own some of the large hospital buildings. And so they're the companies that are going out and either building or buying these massive buildings. But there's a couple issues with that right now, because on one hand, the entire office market is completely changing because of this pandemic. I mean, companies just don't need as much office space as before. So we have a massive surplus of office space in the United States. And so you have some banks and institutions on Wall Street that don't really want to touch that anymore because it's not as needed as it was before. Same with retail real estate. This is one of Wall Street's favorite places to invest their money because they would invest their money into shopping plazas and shopping malls, which used to be a very safe place to invest your money. But now because of the digital revolution, people aren't going to shopping malls as much. They're not going to shopping plazas as much. So that's just not a very attractive place to invest your money in real estate. That leaves only one type of real estate to be technology proof residential real estate, because no matter what happens in technology, we're always going to need a roof over our heads. We're always going to need a place to sleep. And traditionally, these institutions were investing their money into big cities, places like New York and Chicago, places where you would want to live, work and play at the same place. But because of the pandemic, many people have been moving out of the big cities into suburbs. And it's also harder right now for corporations to be able to build more of these buildings just because we still are dealing with a labor shortage, even though unemployment is still supposedly low and we still are dealing with supply chain issues. So it's much more expensive and much more difficult to build these type of buildings. So Wall Street is looking at their options. Where can we take this money? The stock market is overvalued. Some of these startups are overvalued. The commercial real estate market is not making any sense. We don't want to invest it into these apartment complexes, into big cities, because we don't know if people are going to still want to live in these big cities. And that leaves them with single family homes, which is a market that Wall Street traditionally never wanted to touch because it's extremely difficult to manage a whole bunch of single family homes. You're dealing with a bunch of different people and you're also dealing with a whole bunch of different maintenance requests in different parts of the country. But now when you're comparing all of these options, you have some hedge funds and institutions saying, we'll take that risk. We'll start investing in single family homes. And the great thing is, we don't have to compete against a whole bunch of other hedge funds and institutions because we're just competing against your regular mom and pop people who want to buy a home themselves. So when you look at all of these options, hedge funds are now saying, well, the stock market and companies are too overvalued and commercial real estate is too risky and keeping this money in cash is also risky because we're losing value to inflation. So let's go out and buy a tangible asset where we're not competing against other institutions. Let's go out and buy homes. The reason why this is so interesting to me is because I'm a real estate investor and I started investing in real estate after the 2008 crash. And that was when banks were just liquidating homes at pennies on the dollar. And I remember thinking to myself, why don't banks just hold on to these homes? Because they're now selling these homes at major losses. And if they were just able to create a system where they could renovate the homes and rent it out, they wouldn't lose as much money. But these banks were not in the business of renting homes. They're not in the business of flipping homes. All they wanted to do was lend money and they wanted to get rid of the real estate as fast as possible which is why they were selling real estate in some instances for literally 95% off. They were losing 90 to 95% of every dollar that they invested into these homes because they were just liquidating them. Now, bear in mind that I'm from Michigan, which is one of the hardest hit markets in the country, but that's what I was seeing happen. Now you're seeing hedge funds saying, well, we don't want to miss this opportunity now. So they're buying up homes across the country as a way for them to own some tangible assets and create some rental real estate cash flow. Now, before I go into whether Wall Street is going to create a bubble or a crash in the housing market because of what they're doing, let me talk about what this means for you, because if you own a home, if you want to buy a home, or even if you want to rent a home, this is going to affect you. So pretty much if you live in the United States, it's going to affect you. Home prices are determined ultimately by supply and demand. When you have a lot of people that want to buy a home and not that many homes available for sale, this pushes home prices up. On the flip side, when you have a lot of people selling their homes and not that many people buying homes, this pushes home prices down. Right now, we are in an environment where you have a lot of people that want to buy homes, a lot of banks and institutions that want to buy homes, and very little people actually selling homes. We have one of the smallest inventory of homes 
ever. And so you have all these people and now all these banks and institutions coming with all this money wanting to buy homes which is pushing home prices up. At the same time, we're also entering a market where it is gonna become even more expensive to buy a home, even if home prices don't go up, because interest rates are rising. We've already seen interest rates rise quite a bit in 2022, and the Federal Reserve Bank hasn't even started raising interest rates yet. We know that the Fed needs to raise interest rates to fight inflation, and they keep saying that they're gonna raise interest rates multiple times in 2022, so once the Fed starts raising interest rates, it's gonna become more expensive to buy a home because now you're more mortgage is going to become more expensive and refinancing home is going to become more expensive. Typically what that would mean is you would see some sort of home price correction because in 2021 we saw home prices grow by something around 19 percent. So this is home prices and we saw wages grow only by four percent in 2021. Now home prices cannot sustainably continue growing this much faster than wages because people are not going to be able to afford homes. They're going to get priced out of homes. We've already been seeing that happen. We saw it happen in 2021. We're seeing it happen even more in 2022. And so if more and more people can't afford homes, you would think that home prices would have to go down because now homeowners are going to say, oh, nobody's buying my home because our home is too expensive and mortgage costs are too high. So we're going to have to cut the price of our home. But now you also have to factor in the fact that it's it's not just home buyers that want to buy homes and it's not just mom and pop investors that are trying to buy the homes. You have Wall Street, which is backed by billions and billions of dollars trying to buy up homes. So for them, they don't really care about what's going on with these little mortgage rate increases. They don't really care if home prices continue going up, they will continue fronting the bill. So you have to think that even if it becomes more expensive to own a home, that Wall Street will continue buying and that their share of home ownership will continue to rise even if regular people cannot afford to buy a home. That would in turn make renting a home more expensive because that means your costs are gonna go up with home ownership as well. Property taxes would go up. If home prices go up, your property expenses go up. And so in order to mitigate these costs, you're gonna have to raise rents. But real estate is very localized and where these hedge funds are buying homes is also very localized, which is why some areas are gonna see bigger rises than others. This chart is going over the top areas that are being bought up by investors. And what you see is a San Diego, San Fran, Nashville, Orlando, Tampa, Las Vegas, Miami, Jacksonville, Charlotte, Phoenix, and Atlanta are some of the areas that have the highest rate of investors buying homes. Like in Atlanta, Phoenix, and Charlotte, you have investors buying almost one out of every three homes that's sold in these neighborhoods. So if you're in the market to buy a home, it pays to understand what's going on around you, and it looks like home prices are gonna continue to rise even if interest rates go up as long as Wall Street continues to buy homes at this rate. But there is a chance that one day these hedge funds wake up and say, you know, this home buying business is way too time consuming, is way too labor intensive, and it's not for us, so we're gonna shut it down. We saw Zillow do the exact same thing. One day they woke up and they shut down their multi hundred million dollar business just because they were losing money and they couldn't manage it. Now, as a little bit of a heads up, if you are in the market for a home and you wanna secure a lower interest rate mortgage or refinance, you wanna do that sooner rather than later because the Fed will probably raise interest rates multiple times in 2022, which will make it more expensive for you to borrow money. So if you are interested in that, just keep that in mind. And as you're shopping around, make sure you do actually shop around because some lenders are gonna charge you a whole lot less in fees and interest on the exact same loan. And it's a whole lot easier to do that now than before because you can just use a mortgage comparison tool online. And the following is an advertisement from our sponsor, Credible, who operates a mortgage comparison website. At Credible, you can check pre-qualified mortgage or refinance rates at no charge to you. They have multiple lenders competing on their marketplace. That way you can compare great rates and pick the option that's best for you. The process is super simple. All you have to do is go onto Credible's website and enter in a few pieces of information, which just takes a few minutes, and the Credible will present you with actual pre-qualified rates from different lenders, that way you can compare. Their pre-qualification process is easy to use, it only takes a few minutes, and checking pre-qualified rates does not affect your credit score. So if you want to learn more and see what mortgage or refinance rates you might qualify for, I'll put the link to how you can do that with our sponsor Credible in the description. Hello. Credible does pay minority mindset and advertising fee when you submit a pre-qualification request and Credible Operations Inc. NMLS number 1681276 is not available in all states. So if you want to learn more and see what mortgage or refinance rates you might qualify for, I'll put the link to how you can do that in the description below. This brings us to the third thing that I want to talk about, which is, is Wall Street creating a bubble by buying all of these homes across the United States? The reason why you invest in real estate is ultimately to make money. 
right? And the way that you make money in real estate is a little bit different than the way you make money in typical investments. In most of your traditional investments, the way you make money is you buy an investment and then you want to sell it for a profit. In real estate, it's a little bit different. You buy a home like this and then you're going to rent it out to somebody else and then they're going to pay you rent for you giving them access to your home. Well, what we've been seeing happen is because home prices have been going up so fast, rent prices have been going up too, but the returns on homes have been dropping significantly. To put it in perspective, when I first started investing in real estate after the 2008 crash, I was able to buy a home very easily for around $30,000 in a great area. Now, I know this is going to sound crazy. $30,000 for a home, that was the market. After the 2008 crash, especially in Michigan, you were able to go into great areas with great schools and lots of businesses and buy a home for thirty grand. So these $30,000 homes were then renting out for $800 to $850 a month. Nowadays, in today's market, that $30,000 home is selling for something around $150,000 to $200,000. So home prices have gone up significantly, but rent prices have gone up from $800 to $850 to maybe $1,100 to $1,300. So rents have gone up quite a bit, but nowhere near the amount that home prices have gone up. Now there still are quite a bit of neighborhoods here in Michigan and other parts of the Midwest where you can buy homes with the 1% rule, which means you buy a home and then you rent it out for 1% of your cost to buy the home. So if you buy a home for $150,000, you rent it out for $1,500 a month. You just have to know where to look. But that's not the entire country. If you're from Manhattan or San Francisco or Phoenix and you're watching this, you're gonna say $150,000 home? What the heck are you talking about? but those do exist in the Midwest. But what we've been seeing happen is that a hedge fund on Wall Street doesn't care about getting the same returns as a smaller investor does because a smaller investor needs to make a profit because that's the money that they're going to use to pay their bills. It's the money that they can use to pay all their expenses. And that's also going to be the money that they use to pay themselves versus an investor from Wall Street. Well, they might have thousands of different homes, so they don't necessarily need to make as big of a profit on one home. So what that means is they've been able to then drive up the prices of homes just that way they can acquire more homes quicker and they're making smaller returns. When I invest in real estate, I'm looking for a 7% cash on cash returned, which means for every dollar that I invest, I want to make seven cents in positive cash flow. Now, when you go into these bigger cities, you go to Phoenix, you go to Texas, you go to California, you go to New York, you're not going to see this type of 7% return. You might be seeing a three or 4% return. When I was in Austin, Texas and Phoenix, Arizona, in the later part of 2021, I was looking at some investment properties over there and they were being actively listed at a 1% return which means if you bought, say, a home for $100,000, they don't have $100,000 homes, but just for the sake of this example, you buy a $100,000 home, the $100,000 home is gonna make you a $1,000 profit over the course of a year. Or if you wanna use bigger numbers, if you go out and you buy a million dollar home, you're gonna make $10,000 worth of profit. Now this 1% return doesn't really leave you with much of a margin, which means if something goes wrong, now you have to pay money out of your pocket. And the reason why these homes are able to sell for a 1% return is because the sellers are saying, well, rent prices are gonna to continue to grow by 10 to 15% a year. And if rents continue to grow by 10 to 15% a year, you're gonna see a growth in your rental income. So you don't need to worry about the fact that you're not gonna make any money for the next year or two. But in the future, that's when you'll start to be able to make a profits and your home value or your real estate value is gonna be so much higher that you'll be able to sell it for a profit. So let me diagram what this means. Let's say this home is now $1 million. I'm gonna go up and buy this home for a million dollars and I'm essentially gonna make no money in cash flow. I might even have to pay money every single month in order to maintain the home, but the goal is now that in a few years, this home will be worth $2 million. This is the goal with a lot of real estate investors, especially when we're talking about these Wall Street investors, because this is the type of investment that fits their portfolio. They wanna buy something and sell it for a big profit. They don't care if they don't make any money along the way because they wanna be able to sell it for a big profit. Now, typically, if you see this type of growth, now you can finally sell the property and finally make some money, or you can refinance out, and now you have some cash in your pocket, and now you finally have made some money on the home, but you don't actually make any money unless the home value goes up. This is what Wall Street is hoping for. Here's the concern. In order for this to happen, you're gonna need people to be buying this home at this price. 
And if mortgage rates are going up, which we know that's going to be happening in 2022 and 2023, if mortgage rates go up, that means this $1 million home is automatically going to be even more expensive because your mortgage is going to be a lot more money now to buy this $1 million home than it was a year or two ago. But in addition to that, you also need the money to go out and buy a $2 million home. You need to afford the down payment, you need to afford the closing costs, and you have to afford the higher mortgage costs. Typically in a normal housing market with interest rates go up, that causes home prices to cool down a little bit because it becomes more expensive for people to buy homes. And if you have less people buying homes, less demand, and the same amount of supply, well then the supply now has to adjust the prices in order to accommodate the less demand. In other words, the answer is gonna depend on how and when Wall Street wants to make money. This leaves us with three scenarios as to what can happen. The first scenario is Wall Street doesn't care about cash flow. They continue to buy homes even though home prices go up and even though it becomes more expensive to own a home. So now we see home prices go up, we see the cost to own a home go up because interest rates go up, but Wall Street doesn't care less and less people are gonna be able to buy homes because home affordability will continue to go down, but Wall Street keeps buying because, well, they don't care. They think that they'll be able to sell their homes for a big profit in the future, so they just keep buying and buying and buying, and this will continue to push home prices up, and America essentially becomes a renter nation because now Wall Street and hedge funds own 50% of the real estate in America, and now hedge funds are just buying homes and selling homes to each other, and the homes in America are owned by Wall Street. In that case, home prices will continue to go up and this bubble will continue to just inflate and inflate and inflate. Scenario number two is Wall Street says, you know what, we don't wanna wait to see our profits. We don't wanna wait to sell our home. We actually wanna start generating cash flow. And so now in this scenario, if interest rates start to go up, and less than less people want to buy a home, well then these institutions on Wall Street might say, it's not making sense for us to buy these homes anymore because our monthly payments are so much higher and the rents that we're getting are not supporting these monthly payments. So we're losing water on these homes that we're buying and we can't afford to buy any of these homes anymore. If that happens, then Wall Street might stop buying homes or they might start selling their homes because their debt payments are so high that they cannot afford their monthly costs. So if this happens, this could push Wall Street to sell their homes and this would completely flip the market and now you have a whole bunch more sellers. And the scenario number three is you have some sort of X factor where Wall Street wakes up one day and they say, it is too difficult to manage these homes. We cannot manage all these different roofs. We cannot manage all these tenants. We don't have the infrastructure in place because it is difficult to manage these homes even if you have a property management company because they have to have the ability to manage all of these homes. And we haven't seen this big of a growth in real estate investments really ever. So the infrastructure to manage all this real estate is really not built yet. Or maybe we see some sort of government regulation come into play where the government says Wall Street has to go through other hoops, they have to pay other fees and fines if they want to be buying single family homes. I don't know what will happen with that. I mean, after we saw the mortgage moratorium and the eviction moratorium happen after the 2020 pandemic, I always start to include this X factor because we never really know what's gonna happen. I'll be keeping you updated on my channel. And if you like the idea of staying on top of everything that's going on in the financial world, you can subscribe to Market Briefs, which is a free financial newsletter that I created. I'll put the link to how you can do that in the description below. What's up everybody? If you want to continue building your financial education, I linked a relevant video here that I think you'll love. And as an added bonus, I have a free guide on how you can start generating passive income that you can download and read for free. All you got to do is click that button below. What I was doing was working, but like these were late nights, like from 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. every single night, 